One of our conclusions in the book is that actually for development, social preferences of populations have mattered much more than uh, economic planning, helpful as that sometimes is, and uh, uh, political leadership, although that played a very important role in Asia uh, particularly. And the reason I mention this is the last gasp of uh, efforts to come to a unified uh, scheme for development uh, were encapsulated in something that came to be known as the Washington Consensus in the very late 1980s. Uh, it was an idea uh, that involved policies that were basically applicable to all countries, sound financial practices, doubtless a good idea, many other things, but basically a one-size-fits-all model. Need I add that it failed miserably? Not only did it fail miserably, but it became so controversial as to kill itself in very short order. And rather wisely, nobody since then has tried one of these uh, grand schemes. Uh, by the way, if you need any convincing on how different very successful development tracks can be from each other, Think of India and China over the last 30 years. These are the two countries that have produced, large countries that have produced consistently the two highest rates of growth over the last 30 years. They had completely different um, uh, development models. China's first, uh, after Deng Xiaoping came to power, uh, focused on feeding the population, so much of which had starved during earlier uh, waves of economic policy in China, then moving to uh, export-oriented industries for which they needed strong infrastructure, which they somehow or other managed, uh, such that uh, within 30 years, probably uh, the greatest growth in history uh, and also the largest adventure in pulling people out of absolute poverty unfolded in China over the last 30 years. It's worth reflecting on, as we're often quite critical of China, what they have achieved in the last uh, 30 years. Uh, India never achieves anything in as linear a fashion as China is able to, but uh, they had um, a green revolution, an agricultural revolution during the 60s and 70s, rather reluctantly, but because essentially um, the Prime Minister of India felt it was undignified to accept food aid from the US at a time when you disagreed with the US over Vietnam. Uh, and India then liberalized its economy in the early 1990s, not a great deal, but just to unleash the Indian genius for entrepreneurship. Uh, and as it turns out, but nobody knew at the time, the Indian genius for services. Uh, so a lot of back office jobs and so on helped propel India forward. Not much of a trace of industrialization in India, uh, and even less of successful agriculture, uh, which was so vital in China. So two completely different models of development that each produced uh, quite a lot of growth, which inevitably, by design or not, pulled quite a large number of people out of poverty by the hundreds of millions in China um, over the last uh, 20 years or so. Uh, 